Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Nonprofit Show. We're really excited you're here, but we're really excited of who our guest is today. Welcome back, Jack Lotto. Thank you. Glad to be here. I have missed you, my friend. We haven't chatted for a bit. You too. I, I, the only time I see you now is on LinkedIn. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my Lord. Well, yeah, there is that, I guess. There is that. Well, we're going to talk about something really interesting today, talking about investing in your career from a, a perspective that we talk about, but we don't really always understand nor explore, and that's professional development. I can't think of a better person to be talking about this with, and so I'm really interested in hearing your perspective and, and why we need to be doing this. Another thing that we want to make sure that we honor and, and, and share our perspective on is how amazing our presenting sponsors are. They include Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Staffing Boutique, Nonprofit Thought Leader, Fundraisers Friday, our new episodes every Friday just dedicated to fundraising, and your part-time controller. We have these amazing co-hosts that come from across the country. They're incredibly diverse. They serve all different aspects of the nonprofit sector. And I'm one of those co-hosts. I'm Julia Patrick, CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy. I'm flying solo today with Jack. So uh, I hope you've been able to get to meet some of these folks. They're just amazing and they're truly brilliant folks. Okay, Jack Delato, CFRE, one of the, the brain trusts of Fundraising Academy as a trainer at National University. For many of our viewers and listeners, you will have known Jack uh, throughout the course of many years. You know, we've done nearly 1,200 episodes and we're in our fifth year of broadcasting. And Jack really is one of those folks that's been with us from the beginning. So welcome back, my friend. Well, great. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be back here. Yeah, it's good. You know, you are known as one of the masters of training not only for Fundraising Academy, but for the CFRE exam. And, and if we ever needed a, a track across our, our country in terms of elevating our profession, elevating our talents, it's the CFRE component. Can you talk just briefly about what you do as a trainer for both those entities and how this intersects? Sure. So uh, with CFRE, you know, I manage study groups. We do four study groups a year and, uh, you know, we have some uh, required readings. We're in our actual fourth study group of the year right now. It's running on Saturdays. It's free. And uh, it's it's such a great, fun thing for me to do, especially because I bring on other guest hosts to join me with the, you know, presenting different um, different domains of the CFRE. And I, I just really enjoy that. Um, and, you know, it's just one of the things that I have a great deal of pleasure from. And then, of course, I'm a trainer at the Fundraising Academy at National University, which is really one of the most passionate things I do. I love the work that we do at the Fundraising Academy because we are building a cadre of fundraisers who are going to change the world, I like to say. Uh, and every time they come and they come to a workshop, or they come to our conference or whatever interaction they have with the fundraising academy, it just strengthens their understanding of fundraising. And that means they raise more money. And you know what I say, when, when fundraisers raise more money, Julia, all boats rise. Our lives are better yeah. all across the board. You know, it's true, Jack. And I think that we've spoken about this, um, you know, quite a bit as over the years. And that is, um, you can have all the passion in the world for the mission, but if you don't really know the process of how to do this, you're not going to be as successful, right? And so it's like one of those things you've got to train up. So that's why I'm really excited to talk to you today about, you know, professional development. And basically we hear this phrase, you know, professional development, but how does it work and why do we need to do it? Right. And, you know, I, I grew out of my work with CFRE candidates. You know, one of the my big mantras with CFRE is, guys, you've got to have a study plan. You have to have a goal at the end of the study plan to pass the CFRE test. And you have to work backwards from your test date and build a vigorous study plan. And it got me thinking, Julia, 
Wouldn't this also be a good idea for pro uh, professional fundraisers to build a professional development plan? A professional development plan that will give them some goal at the end that they would seek to achieve and a step-by-step -step approach to achieve it. And I'm, you know, what does planning do? Look, we're planners. You're a planner, I'm a planner, fundraiser, we write development plans, we participate in strategic plans, we're involved in marketing, communication plans, volunteer plans. Now I say to fundraisers, it's time to build your own professional development plan. Where do you want to be in five years and work towards it? I love this because, you know, AFP, Association of Fundraising Professionals, and we've had Mike Geiger, the the uh, CEO who's who's transitioning out, but uh, come on the nonprofit show and, and tell us that the average, you know, fundraising professional development director, whatever you want to call them, is not staying in the job past 17 to 19 months. Yeah. which is horrific. I mean, if we were pipe fitters, it would be the same thing, right? I mean, you don't want to see a major group of your sector leaving, right? It's, it just absolutely destroys the fabric of our sector in so many ways. And so I love having this plan. I love understanding how professional development might help us keep our talent longer, uh, not burn them out, and help them build their own value. So right. I'm I'm really intrigued by this, Jack, and I, I appreciate what yeah. you think about this. So you know, I'm inspired by Simone Biles. Okay. Yes. And I tried to understand and I looked at her as insp for inspiration in creating a professional development plan. And what we see in her is a person who had a goal. Her goal was to be the greatest gymnast alive and to win gold medals at the Olympics. And what she did to achieve that, she just didn't get on the balance beam and all of a sudden was great, which would have been awesome because that would have been a miracle. What she did is she gathered her resources. She said, if I'm going to achieve this goal, I'm going to need certain things. I'm going to need a coach. I'm going to need a, a plan to, to master this gymnast Thing that I'm trying to achieve. She, uh, she, she wrote that plan down. She actualized it in every day. She looked at that plan until she got to the point where she is today. That's what fundraisers need to do. We need to have a plan that's written that brings focus. Her plan brought focus. It was a roadmap. She created a roadmap to success. And let's face it, she did. And she had some bumps along the way. Remember when she dropped out briefly in Japan because she wanted to take care of her mental health? I thought that was awesome, Julia. And yeah. in our road to being a plan giving officer or an annual giving officer or the chief development officer, we need this plan. We need to gather our resources. We need mentors. We need study. I, I like to say that, you know, it could be AFP. It could be attending various AFP webinars. Definitely at the Fundraising Academy, you want to come and take our classes. I would urge somebody who would say, you know what, Jack, my career goal is to really be a volunteer coordinator and to, or a manager of volunteers, including board. And what would I say? Here is a resource for you. It's called Building Board Champions, a book that you've written. Or it might be Achieving Excellence in Fundraising. Gather these resources together and implement that plan. I think the first thing we do when we have a goal, let's say I want to be a plan giving officer, is to assess and understand what skills I have now to achieve that goal. You know, where am I? And then to identify and reflect on what skills I need to become. Mm -hmm. I need to know more about plan giving vehicles or I need to know more about, uh, you know, creating this uh, uh, ask for major gift donors to make plan gifts. I need to identify what resources I have and what resources I need and then go for those resources. Maybe it's training and plan giving. Maybe it's shadowing somebody who's doing plan giving now, or maybe it's just reading books and going to workshops and things like that. If you yeah. want to 
that goal, you've got to identify what your skills are now and reflect. Then you have to create a timeline, guys, a strategy mm -hmm. and timeline. With, a, with the study plan for CFRE, it's a timeline. You are going to read this amount of work by this point. You are going to attend this many workshops by this point and strategies. And then also you have to be a little flexible. You have to say, okay, I, I've got this thing going on. I have to go to my kid's baseball game, you know, and do something else that, that maybe we, we have to stop what we're doing or, or research it or figure it out. And then I think we have to, once we create that strategy and timeline, we have to execute, execute. And then look at that plan and, and look and see if it needs revision. The final thing I always like to say about this is you're, you are not creating a professional development plan by yourself. The most important thing I think you do is you share it with your spouse you talk to your partner, you talk to your children, you say, this is my goal. This is where I want to be in 2030. And here is how we're going to get there. And I need you to join with me and be part of this professional development journey that I'm about to take. You know, I, I love your process. I love those steps. You basically five steps to navigate through. Um, I'm really intrigued by... I, and these are my words, the witness uh, factor, like, you know, sharing with your trusted advisors, family, friends, you know, co-workers um, about this journey that you're going to take, that you are asking for support, that you are in essence witnessing to your cohort. This is what, what I'm about, because I think there's something odd and at the same time, magical about giving voice to something that when we speak up and we say something, yeah. um, we hear it, you know, it goes back, it comes to the forefront of our brain. Um, others, you know, can support us. And so I like that you, you include that because that's not a usual suspect. Right. And here's the thing. I, I really urge you to go to your supervisor. Let's say you want to be an annual giving manager. You want to manage the annual giving program. If you came to me and I was your supervisor, I'd say, yes, yes, yes. I love this employee. They have ambition. I want to help them along with their ambition. Maybe I would say, you know what I'm going to do, Julia? I'm going to send you to a training, a two-day training somewhere on managing annual gifts writing a direct mail letter, if it's major gifts, how to interact with major gift donors, prospecting, et cetera, whatever it is. And, and if it's CFRE, certainly pay, help them pay for the CFRE, pay for it all if you can, and, and, and go on trains. One of the things that I did in my own career when I was actually a fundraiser, I availed myself of every single training I got. Anytime my employer would say, Hey, you want to learn about plan gifts? There I was. You want to be a better grant writer? There I was. So even if it wasn't something that was exactly in my career goal, I thought it was wise for me to find out as much as I could about that topic. And along the career, along my career path, sometimes I had to make revisions. Maybe if an opportunity came up for me where someone said, I would say, hey, I'm not exactly ready to do major gifts, but they say, would you like to do major gifts? I took the opportunity and then I started backfilling and figuring out what I had to learn, what I had to do to be the best major gift officer I could be. So you there's know, lots of things around that. Yeah, I love that because I also think that if you're if if you're not so one dimensional, you have more opportunities and you just have a stronger brain. Right. I mean, you can make stronger connections and you can understand those around you during doing work and, and what it takes to run a healthy organization. Yeah. So I agree. I love that you, you know, yeah. talk about leaning in. I think that's yeah. important. You know, one of the things that I love about creating your own professional development plan, it's for you. It's yeah. something you could do for you. And, you know, it's funny. I talked to someone yesterday from North Carolina. And he was telling me, he says, well, you know, I'm, I'm getting up there. I don't know how much longer I'm going to work, but I still want to get my CFRE. And I said, well, why do you want to get your CFRE? And he said, because I want to get it. And I said, 
go for it. I want to help you. you. He said, it's not going to improve my job. I'm already the chief development officer, but I just want to have it. And I love that. I think that so much of what we do in fundraising is for others. It's for our organization. Mm -hmm. It's for our beneficiaries and clients. It's for our coworkers. It's for our board members. It's for our leadership. But now I'm saying it's time to be me oriented. And I've looked at I've looked at many a, a study plan, and I always say, well, this study plan has you doing five hours of studying a day. You can't do that. That's an unrealistic. What's in it for you? Put time in it for you. One of the people I talked with once. He said, I'm going to study during the time when I would normally be doing my workout. You know what I told him? No. Oh, yeah. Don't do that. Do yeah. your workout. That's you. That's for you. And, and I went in this discussion. I said, you have to do things for you. And that's what I think a professional development plan does, Julia. It mm -hmm. says, this is where I want to be. This is where I want to go. It's a roadmap map and it's a tool of management it's a managing ourselves our professional development career so you mentioned something very briefly and i want to drill down a little bit um, about this who pays for all this because these things can be incredibly expensive i know mm -hmm. with your trainings at fundraising academy you have things that are free you have things that are not um, you're going to be launching a really exciting project um, very shortly in the fall, uh, which we'll, we'll be talking about more at another time. But how do we find this, and I'm going to call it out, investment to be funded? And, and what does that look like? Well, if you're the chief development officer and you do not have a, a, a training budget for yourself as well as your people, that's a mistake. You okay. should have in your budget some portion of your budget to train people. Because when I always said this, when I was the executive director, or if I was the chief development officer, I said, when they become better fundraisers, I benefit because I'm the leader. When I send them to a plan giving workshop and they come back and they're like, go, oh, no, I'm going to implement this plan giving program I learned. And I've ha heard people say this to me. I love this major gift of thing I've learned in a major gift. I'm like, go for it. Yeah. Actualize it. You know, so it really is important that in your budget, guys, you put things in there for uh, staff development training of staff. I, and I think this is advocated by AFP, certainly by the Fundraising Academy at NU, and also by CFRE. Please help your employees be better because when they're better, they're going to raise more money and you, Mr. or Miss Boss, are going to look better as well. So please do that. I know that there are some people who, who they come to me and they say they won't pay for the book. They won't do this. And I try to steer them towards used books or, you know, something or, or free workshops. And there are lots of free workshops out oh, there, yeah. you know, I mean, so to start that way. And then in my own career, sometimes if I really was interested and I wanted to do something, I figured out how to pay for it myself right. you know, to do that. So I, I think it's really important to invest in yourself. And sometimes that means less uh, Starbucks or Pete's or some yeah. other coffee house, but more, more you, more about you. And uh, I'm all into fundraisers taking care of themselves now. Right. I think that's an important discussion. You know, one of the things, too, that I've seen up across my years is um, this like shared investment and it's an interesting thing. It is um, the organization saying, and I've seen this in for-profit and nonprofit, where management comes back and says, yeah, we'll support this, but we will refund it or the costs or we'll give a percentage once that certification or designation has been achieved. And I yeah. feel like that is um, something done to... Um, incentivize the conclusion of that that achievement but also i'm curious as to what you think about this i feel like maybe it cements somebody to their employer meaning you know we don't want to support you to get this designation or this certificate 
just so you can job hop or no, job search. No. Do you I have know. a thought on that? Well, so I've, I've heard of some employers saying, well, we're going to put you through this pro program. You're going to become an expert in this topic, but we want you to commit to staying with us two more years. Oh, okay. it, and I kind of, I, I think that's fair. And uh, honestly, if someone was investing in me, they wouldn't have to put that incentive in there or that caveat that I have to say, I would want to stay with them yeah. because they're investing in me. And I yeah. think that's awesome. So yeah. I would really want to, to remain with them and maybe even longer. I love when I hear uh, from CFRE, candidates who say, well, you know, I'm, my, I'm up for renewal and my employer is going to pay for that. I say, that's a beautiful thing. Right. Or right. I'm certifying and my employer is going to pay for that. That's, I love that. And, you know, when I hear some people say, well, my employer is so good about this. My, my boss said this. And I'm thinking to myself, I want to go to work for that person. That's the kind of person I want to work for because yeah. that's the kind of boss who cares about her employees, her staff, the people who she's working with. And that's really great. And I'll tell you something, if there's a lot of turnover, as you were mentioned earlier, uh, mm -hmm. Julia, in it as AFP at 17 months, it's really a failure in leadership. So yeah. if you keep those people, guys, really give them, nurture them, help them. Get, ask them to give you their professional development plan. People, guys, you could ask your employees to create their own professional development plan with these five steps that we've talked about earlier and then review it with them. Ask them how you could help them achieve this. What do they need to achieve this? Some of the best employers in this country, the for-profit employers, invest in their employees. Right. Well, let's finish up our conversation with that. Is like, Finding that right professional development, because you mentioned this right off the bat, and I love this. It was like, if there's a, if there's a, an opportunity to learn about grant management or grant, you know, writing that, you know, maybe that's not your, your job description, but you're going to get invested and learn. How do we determine what is the right professional development? I mean, how do we, if you, in essence, vet what these offerings are, because there's just so much, um, you know, across the spectrum now that we can do this digitally. Yeah. So I think, I think there are some absolutely known good trainers, AFP, Bloomerang, the fundraising Academy. There are some really good, reputable trainers. Now I do get a lot of emails from people who say, Hey, we're going to host this podcast on this topic. And, and I think, how are they going to do that? What is their expertise to do that? So I think you have to be discriminating in what you do. In the same thing of what you read, you know, every year, you know what I do, Julia? I I do a Google search. What are the three recently published books? By the way, your book is coming up next year because it was published this year. But yeah. And then I try to buy those books. So I bought three books from last year. Two of them were awful, in my opinion. One of them was great. So, I mean, you have to like think about who are these people who, yeah. uh, what's their credibility to run this workshop or this, or this training? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's an, it's an interesting thing. And, and I, I do think that because to your point, there's so many choices, we do need to refine this um, because if it's, if it turns out to be a negative experience or it, it steers you in the wrong direction, then that's really a problem. And we've got to make sure that we are navigating forward. You know, we mentioned, and, and maybe I'll use the word we teased a bit, that Fundraising Academy is going to be launching their own certification uh, product in the, the near future. And we'll have somebody back on uh, to discuss that more in depth, because I think it's a really exciting opportunity. You know, we've had a great relationship with Fundraising Academy, and I personally um, have lamented that I didn't know your process um, as a young community fundraiser because I could have raised millions more for my community. Oh, I agree. I and, mean, so, you know, no. it's, it's exciting to think that you all are going to have um, an actual certification uh, project uh, underway. Right. So. And I'll tell you what, I'm working on that right now with some of my colleagues at the Fundraising Academy. It's the most exciting thing. I honestly, in my years of 
at either at National University or JFK University. This is so exciting for me, this asynchronous course. And every time I get in there and start working on it, I think, where was this when I needed it 30 years ago? Why now? Yeah. You know, it's so it's so yeah. incredible, you know. Yeah, so I know that. You know, and it's interesting, Jack, that, you know, you and your um, amazing cohort of experts at National University can witness that, that you can say that, that you can actually you know, you can um, you can understand that because you can look at that arc of your career and and go back to certain things that happened and be like, yeah, if I had been if I had known if I had been better trained, if we no. had had these discussions, I mean, it's pretty profound. And so we're very excited to be talking, you know, more with you. I'm always excited to talk with the amazing Jack Alato, CFRE fundraising academy trainer. I like to call him a bon vivant. He's a man about the world, uh, an amazing, amazing human being with tremendous energy and passion for what he does. Um, you can find Jack Alato fundraising at fundraising-academy.org. Um, they are a part of National University based out of San Diego, and uh, they work with folks all over the world. And so to Jack's point, if you're looking for some professional development and you just want to get started or understand what it even looks like, um, you can start at Fundraising Academy and really dig into some of the things that they're talking about and uh, kind of, I think get the pulse, don't you think, Jack? Oh yeah, you know one of the best things, and Julia, I got to just say this. I know we're gonna we're gonna close and find a mentor, guys. Yeah, my mentors, some of them. <laughs> I had a mentor I didn't like, but man, did I learn a lot from her. You know, she just was awesome. You know, and I it, at the time it was painful, but in retrospect, it was the best thing that ever happened to me. You know, so find that. a mentor. Find a mentor. Yeah, that's why that's good advice. And I think that dovetails to what you said earlier about witnessing what you're what you're doing. You know, when you have that accountability and you have that accountability partner magical things happen. And so using that voice um, going both ways, I think is brilliant. Well, Jack Alato, always fun to be with you. Always fun to get your perspective and uh, reconnect. It has been magical for me. So thank you very much. Thank you. I love being with you. Yeah, it's such fun. It's a lot of fun. Hey, you know, another thing that's really fun are the amazing presenting sponsors that we have that support us day in and day out. And they include Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Staffing Boutique, Nonprofit Thought Leader, Fundraisers Friday, our new episodes on Friday, just dedicated to fundraising. It's super cool. And your part-time controller. These are the folks that join us day in and day out. Um, as I mentioned earlier, when we kicked off the, the episode with Jack, you know, marching towards 1200 episodes and five years of broadcasting. Um, it's really an achievement for all of us on our team and Fundraising Academy has certainly been a part of that. So um, thank you to everyone who has supported us and who continues to support us. Okay, Jack, you know how I end this um, episode, every episode with this message. And today I'm thinking about how important it is for our own well-being. And the message goes like this to stay well so you can do well. Yeah. Thanks everyone.